Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new Destiny video. Guiding Light here, and in today's Destiny video, I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks for going flawless on the map Skyline. Now, we've never seen this map for Trials of Osiris before, so I thought this would be the perfect time to give you guys a few tips for going flawless on here. Now, before we get into this video, guys, just based off of my experience and playing yesterday, this map seems to be a little sweaty. People are taking advantage of really annoying head glitches, and it seems that almost every single team, you're going to have to deal with a lot of No Land Beyond, so... I run No Land Beyond all the time, and it's not really too big of a problem for me. I wasn't really trying to run it this week. I was more around using like Last Word or even A's Luna. But as you can tell by these statistics, a lot of people are running No Land Beyond in Wormwood or just like uh, Icebreaker Wormwood. It just seems that we're seeing a ton of Wormwoods as well as just No Lands and really long distance snipers. Now, anytime that you find yourself in this inside room here, which a lot of people will be in, you will most of the time want to have your sidearm out. If you're running a class like Last Word sidearm like I was, previously then that was actually a pretty good setup for the inside i liked that a lot and it made it so that i was pretty comfortable getting kills from all distances while in that room now if you're one of the teams that likes to play more or less on the outside or if you're playing against one of those teams that i was talking about that like to hard scope a lot you may want to run the no land even if you are going inside so my biggest tip for this map now is to figure out what you and your team want to do now the inside is really easy to control you've got a lot of really narrow hallways which makes it really good for the no land beyond or for a person with a really good hand cannon shot now if you type a team that wants to rather play outside and make your way inside just keep in mind that the zone will spawn on the inside dead in the middle in between the elevators there right behind where i'm standing now so if you ever do take it down to zone you need to keep that in mind and know that the flag will spawn in in this room so if the zone ever does pop up that's just a big tip to keep in mind and that's where you're going to need to go now, if your team wants to go on the inside and you're dealing with teams like I'm dealing with right now, as you can tell, they're all just up there hard scoping. It's a very good idea to keep two people inside. You always are going to want to have two people near each other on this map. And then you're going to have want to have one person that kind of goes around the side while the other two are distracted to get the really easy sniper angles or to just clean them up really quickly with the hand cannon. That's the easiest way I found to play on this map, especially when going against these annoying teams that utilize some of these spots. Now, as you can tell, I'm in one of these spots now. This is the head glitch I'm talking about that people really like to seem to take advantage of. Now, I was extremely frustrated with this team, and I was trying to carry one of my friends here for the first time ever flawless. So I was trying to take any measure to go flawless at this point. I just needed to win this match. So I was taking advantage of some of these head glitches. Now, as you can tell, the other team also wants to take care of these head glitches. This is just what it looks like from the other side. So anytime that you do come up the staircase, you really do want to check your left. You want to check your right because there's almost always going to be someone down there with a no land beyond or some sort of like long distance uh, Mita or maybe even a Jade Rabbit. So that's just something to keep in mind. People really do like to sit back on this map, and I haven't really seen any teams that like to control the medium range. It's either a team that plays very long range, or a team that plays very short range. There's really not ever been anything in between. Now, if you're the type of team that doesn't really like to have someone split off, and you just always want to stay together, and you just feel that it's safer, the, all your teammates are always in the same place to get reses, or just to get the team shots, then when you go inside, just keep in mind that there will be a lot of grenade spam in this room. So you're going to want to make sure that your grenade is ready for when you come in here, just in case you see something on your radar. Most of the time, there's going to be a grenade following, so just keep that in mind if you're in this room. And it seems to be that winds are extremely dedicated just strictly based off of grenades on this map. So you really do want to make sure that your grenades are on point. You don't really want to be missing your grenades. And as you can tell, a perfectly timed grenade like the one there can completely make this round and this map extremely easy. So that kind of brings me back to my previous point as to why I don't really like to stay uh, on top of each other. I usually keep two teammates inside while I sneak around on the outside. But that's just me. That's the only real reason why I don't like to group up is the grenades on this map are really, really annoying. And it seems that any time that a skip grenade or a suppression grenade or a sticky grenade comes in the room, it really affects the match. So you do need to keep that in mind on this map. Now, another tip that I have for you guys is that if you're ever behind, even if it's just one round and it's really early in the game, I would just suggest that you guys go immediately inside. You're going to want to just get control of this room. When it all comes down to it, right here when my bubble is popped is where the zone is going to spawn in. So, no matter how hard you try to get those kills, if you're playing teams like certain teams that you're probably going to run into this week, they're going to play as passive as possible until the zone comes up. That's just what I've seen in my experience from yesterday. And there's also been a lot of scories now. That's pretty common nowadays in Trials, so I didn't really think I needed to mention it. But for a map like this, scories is extremely taken advantage of in certain aspects of the map, as this is a bigger map than normal. And due to the spawns and how the map lays, is laid out, a lot of people can find really easy spots to get their scories with them and their teammates, so you do need to keep that in mind as well when playing Trials. Now also a quick tip before we go, 
don't forget or don't be afraid to throw on a shotgun. If you're inside and you have pretty good control and your team's watching you, don't be afraid to go into your inventory real quick, throw on a shotgun and pick up that ammo because it throws a lot of teams off and due to the narrow hallways like I said before and all these tight corners that have to do with this inside room, a shotgun is extremely effective even after these nerfs that they've just introduced. A shotgun can still be pretty effective on this map and can be pretty game changing when they don't realize you have it because they'll come bum rushing in through a doorway sliding in with their sidearms and then you're sitting there waiting with a shotgun blast to the face it's pretty effective and it seems to get the job done well so I definitely do would suggest that as well if you have the time and you think it's safe throw on a shotgun and pick up that ammo just to surprise the other team it really does throw them off when you have that inside control also don't be afraid to just rush a team like I just did as a lot of teams will be sitting there hard scoped with no land and remember they can only shoot one bullet at a time unless they're extremely good at doing a reload glitch or something for the most part they're only going to be able to shoot one bullet so if you're really agile or if you're on a class like hunter and you can shade step or twilight or do something to just throw their aim off for a second you will have the advantage over them and you can usually bum rush in there like I just did taking advantage of them at hard scoping by the time they get their sidearms out most of the time they're already dead and they're not really able to do anything. So to wrap this one up guys, this map may be a little annoying as you can tell with the campers and it gets a little frustrating at times, but follow your strategy, stick with your team and just try to get as many reses and team shots as possible and you guys should be alright. Also keep in mind with those grenades, you may want to run a, a grenade build this weekend, it may help you out, it may not, it's really just based on how many times you want to throw a grenade in a game. But other than that guys, good luck with your runs this weekend, hopefully these tips do help you out and I'll catch you guys in the streams. Peace. Team.